Uh, about to give this news conference on behalf of uh, Sinn Féin. Just to update you, he left Antrim Police Station uh, about half an hour ago by rear exit, uh, with loyalists having uh, held a sit-down protest outside the front entrance. Uh, he was released from custody early this afternoon after four days of questioning. Uh, the file, however, will still be sent to the prosecutors uh, or the director of public prosecutions by those detectives you've been questioning concerning the murder of uh, G. McConville, the mother of ten. The move means that uh, decision uh, to either charge him uh, or to uh, lay the file to rest will be made by the uh, public prosecution service at a later date uh, after reviewing the evidence presented by the police. Uh, just to uh, reiterate that Jerry Adams has vehemently denied allegations levelled by former Republican colleagues that he ordered the murder of G. McConville in 1972. In uh, an additional complication uh, to this, we were also hearing that uh, Baron McGrory, the director of public prosecutions, uh, who would have made that decision to proceed or not uh, with a prosecution, has had to stand aside... Uh, and will delegate the case to another senior official because he's previously acted as Jerry Adams' lawyer uh, prior to becoming the director of public prosecution. So it could be some time, uh, legal advisers say, before the file is prepared by the police right. service for Northern Ireland. Uh, part of the background to this has been, of course, that the investigations have been uh, taking place prior to the European elections, which is why Sinn Féin have accused the police of uh, political policing ahead uh, of uh, those Sinn Féin candidates uh, in the election forthcoming shortly. But uh, no news as yet of that uh, news conference starting imminently, but uh, our correspondent Ian Woods is there. We'll be back as soon as we uh, see or hear any more. But let's update you with some other news uh, in brief now with Kenyan police saying three people have died and two, uh, after two buses, rather, in the capital Nairobi were struck by what they say were explosive devices. It's believed to have happened on a busy highway close to the city centre. There's been no immediate claim of responsibility. And it follows last night's attack when four people were killed and 15 wounded in two explosions in the coastal city of Mombasa. In one of those attacks, a grenade was reportedly thrown at a bus that arrived from Nairobi. Uh, the other device targeted a luxury hotel at Niali Beach. But so, running a little bit late, here he is arriving at this uh, hotel in Belfast, having made his way from the police station in Antrim, where he'd been questioned for four days. He'd uh, turned up on Wednesday evening to answer questions in relation to the uh, abduction and murder of Jean McConville. Let's listen in to what he's saying to the gathered media. Jerry, 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 Try and talk. Excuse me, can we ask the photographers to move back now? You've got all the protection needs. Okay, so, uh, Grandma Hickwith. Please, photographers down. I think they in the key. I'll just uh, boil them. Excuse me, sit down. Boil them shirt more at her. We've got the on so after horror have uh, Jerry Adams. All right, should we? I would ask the photographers to please, please stay at the level that you're at because you, you'll block 
uh, the, the view uh, of others. Um, I want to welcome you all here. I want to, on behalf of Republicans oh. across Ireland, on behalf of Sinn Féin activists, elected representatives, on behalf of every person who looked on shocked and disgusted at the turn of events over the last four days to extend the warmest of welcomes and the warmest of returns to our party president, Jerry Adams. To make, we will take some questions at the end. I would ask you to bear with us uh, in trying to do that. And finally, uh, to say that uh, once these proceedings are concluded, all of us look forward to getting back again out on the electoral trail with our team of candidates right across uh, Ireland, north and south, east and west. Jeremy. Okay, go to meet my August, August Mila Buenas, Mary Lou. Well, I do is come here, go with this August, go with Van Jean McCampbell, August Achlan, a Cree, and Tragoid Shaw. We're watching a news conference that has just begun at a hotel in Belfast. This is the Sinn Féin president, Gerry Adams, addressing uh, reporters and uh, a battery of uh, cameramen and women, as you can see from the, from the uh, flashes there, speaking at the moment, of course, in Gaelic, and we don't have a translation, but just to fill you in, that he, uh, we knew about four hours ago that Gerry Adams was due to be released without charge from the police station in Antrim, where he'd been held since Wednesday. And there was a sit-down protest by a number of uh, loyalists, not a particularly large number of people, but um, very persistent and pretty vocal as well. And they blocked the main entrance, so uh, Gerry Adams wasn't able to get out of the police station that way. We understand well, no, that Sinn Féin had wanted him to be released by the front entrance and had to leave by the back. So he got to, delayed and uh, made his way to this hotel in Belfast. It'll be very interesting to hear, when we get the English version, um, what kind of language he uses, because there's been a lot of comment over the last four days just how bitter some of the language has been. It's been used by both sides, by loyalists and Republicans, and an insight into uh, some of the potential divisions which still exist. And uh, Sinn Féin had said that they might have to rethink their support for the police service of Northern Ireland and the suggestion that there was a, a small cabal of uh, police officers who were politically motivated in their questioning of him. Let's listen in because he's now speaking in English. I came voluntarily from the Dáil in Dublin to Antrim Barracks last Wednesday, having contacted the PSNI two months ago through my solicitor Seamus Collins to tell them that I was available to meet with them following yet another spate of media speculation, part of a sustained, malicious, untruthful and sinister campaign alleging involvement by me in the killing of Mrs Jean McCombo. When the PSNI contacted my solicitor on Monday afternoon, I was concerned about the timing, given that Sinn Féin is involved in a very important European election and local government elections across the island of Ireland. But I quickly made arrangements to go to Antrim, and I left Leinster House, the Oireachtas, during leaders' questions with the Taoiseach to do so. I want to thank my solicitor, Mr Collins, for his diligence and professional approach, and his colleague, Eugene McKenna. I also want to thank everyone who sent messages 
good will messages to Colette and our family and to my comrades in Sinn Féin for their solidarity. Tell me, where we gives you a leg? I am conscious that there is another family at the heart of all of this, and that is the family of Jean McConville. Let me be very clear. I am innocent of any involvement in any conspiracy to abduct, kill, or bury Mrs. McCumble. I have worked hard with others to have this injustice redressed and for the return of the bodies of others killed during the conflict and secretly buried by the IRA, and I will continue to do so. The commission set up by the two governments, at my request and at the request of the late Father Alex Reid, has said that it is receiving 100% support from Republicans. Indeed, myself and Martin McGuinness were to meet the Commission, we do this privately, around this time as part of this work. I am mindful also that tomorrow is the anniversary of the death and hunger strike of H. Block martyr Bobby Sands. Sitting in my cell in recent days, I reflected on that and on the dreadful summer of 1981. But of course, this is not 1981. This is not 1972. The people of this island, with a few exceptions, have carved out a new dispensation. So while the past needs to be dealt with, and Sinn Féin is up for doing this, including the issue of victims and their families, there can be no going back there is no possibility of going back. Peace needs to be built with determination and a consistent focus. That remains my attention, my commitment and Sinn Féin's constant endeavour. I bear no animosity to anyone. I have no wish to be treated differently from anyone else. I'm an activist. This is my life. And I am philosophical and I understand that I have detractors and opponents. And I especially understand that there are sinister elements who are against the change that Sinn Féin and others are committed to achieving. I did not go to Antrim Barracks expecting special treatment. But it is crucial that everyone is treated fairly. And I seek fair treatment not just for myself or only for myself, but because it's crucially important that the signal goes out, that everybody knows that there, these are changed times, that things have changed, that they will be treated fairly, and that we can all have hope and confidence in the new developing dispensation, including the police service. To send any other signal is to encourage the bigots. So I make the case that those who authorised my arrest and detention could have done it differently. They had discretion. They did not have to use pernicious, coercive legislation to deal with a legacy issue, even one as serious as this, which I was voluntarily prepared to deal with. They did not have to do this in the middle of an election campaign. Remember, I contacted them two months ago. Despite this, I want to make it clear that I support the PSNI. I will continue to work with others to build a genuinely civic policing service. The old guard, which is against change, whether in the PSNI leadership, within elements of unionism, or the far fringes of self-proclaimed but pseudo-republicans, they can't win. The dark side of the British system cannot be allowed to deny anyone, any of our people, Catholic, Protestant or dissenter, from our entitlement to a rights-based, citizen-centred society as set out in the Good Friday Agreement. I'm an Irish Republican. I want to live in a peaceful Ireland based on equality. I've never dissociated myself from the IRA, and I never will. But I'm glad that I and others have created a peaceful and democratic way forward for everyone. The IRA is gone. It's finished. During my interrogation, much was made by my interrogators 
about my time in the 60s, in the civil rights campaign. My arrest and detention in Palace Barracks in the early 70s, my time in Long Cash, even the peace talks in 1972, newspaper articles, photographs of myself and Martin McGuinness at Republican funerals were produced. Books and other open source material was used as the basis of many of the accusations made against me. Much of the interrogations concerned the so-called Belfast Project, conceived by Paul View, university lecturer and a former advisor to Unionist leader David Trimble, and run by Ed Maloney and Anthony McIntyre as part of the Boston College. Both Maloney and McIntyre are opponents of the Sinn Féin leadership and our peace strategy, and have interviewed former Republicans who were also hostile to me and other Sinn Féin leaders. They have accused us of betrayal and sellout and said we should be shot because of our support for the Good Friday Agreement and policing. The allegations of conspiracy made against me in the killing of Mrs. McConville is based almost exclusively on hearsay from unnamed alleged Boston College interviewees, but mostly from Dollars Price and Brendan Cuse. Other anonymous alleged Belfast Project interviewees interviewed only by a letter of the alphabet. So I was told that interviewee R or interviewee A had made such and such uh, a comment in an interview. One of these is claimed by the PSNI to be Ivor Bell, although the interrogators, when I pressed them, told me that he's denied the allegations. I reject all the allegations and rejected all the allegations made against me in these tips. Finally, let me make it clear, because I'm fairly certain that people are concerned, and this is not about me, this process of change, this necessary development of a, an open citizen-based rights-centered society is bigger than any individual, so I'm irrelevant. But let me make it clear that there's only one way for our society to go, and that's forward. No way back. There will be bumps on the road, and yes, we do have to deal with the past, and Sinn Féin have set out our intention to do that, and our willingness to support the Haas and Megan O'Sullivan proposals, and our other propositions to do that are there for everyone to see. But there will be diversions as well. But most importantly, there are elements out there who are actively erecting obstacles, actively seeking to put up diversions. So we know that. I thank everyone for their support. I extend sympathy once again to the McCombell family and all those who have suffered, especially at the hands of Republicans. So that clearly is a special responsibility for us, especially those of us who survived the conflict to deal with. So my resolve, and I'm sure the resolve of this leadership, remains as strong as ever. That is to build the peace, not to let this put us off, not to let anyone use this as an excuse, not to let anyone, whether it's in the dark side or within the uh, individuals who try to prevent us from leaving the barracks, not to let any of those stop citizens here having their full rights and entitlements. It's up to all of us, and there is a role here for civic society, for church leaderships, for trade unions, for governments, and for every citizen out there. It's our future. The past is the past. The future is about children, the future is about grandchildren, the future is about the rights of citizens to live in an Ireland in which everybody can be comfortable. So don't let anyone rob our people, all of our people, of that right. We need equality and we need justice for everyone.
Gå til Mille Markov. Two questions, Jerry Adams. While you were hold, holding this news conference here, Michael McConville is holding a news conference elsewhere in the city. What have you got to say to him? And secondly, at any stage during your detention since last Wednesday, did you think you were going to face charges of any sort? Well, for all I know, I can still face charges. I don't know. There is no basis for charges against me. Uh, my ma message to Michael McConville, like every other victim, but particularly because of the way his, his mother was abducted and the ten children were left orphaned, is that this was a grave injustice. And we can't bring Mrs McConville back, but we can help the family and are committed to helping the family in any way that is possible. And I regret very much uh, what happened. We're in a better place. I'm sure Megan McConville knows that. And I'm sure he has children and he wants them to grow up in a better place than he had to grow up. So all of us together can do that. And I've also found, and Mark McGuinness here has spoken about this at length at different times, some of the victims of the conflict have been the strongest supporters of the peace process. The strongest supporters of the peace process. And all of us have to keep that focus in the time ahead. Good. Mr. Adams, can I check whether it is just the timing that you were arrested you objected to? In other words, if you were arrested next month, would you have been very happy to go there and be questioned, even if it had lasted four days? Well, first of all, I got in touch two months ago because there was a story bit of a flurry in the media about this. Uh, I, I would have wanted any time. Uh, but my point is, they could have arranged to meet me any time. Why, why wait on to the middle of the election? I also, and I, I, I told the senior people in, in Antrim, this is sending an entirely wrong signal to those who don't want the process to work. I don't even think for what it's worth, and part of the Haas proposals recognise that, these are proposals, by the way, that the unions haven't signed up to, but they recognise the right of a family to seek legal redress if that's what they want. Many don't, but some do. So we support that. We have signed up, up for that. So I, I have no problem uh, working with uh, the police on, on these matters and made myself uh, available. But I think that they had discretion. I know of lots of people. You see, this event, serious though it was, this unfortunate tragedy for the family perpetrated by Republicans happened 42 years ago. There was no flight, there was no risk, there was no, there was no danger to anyone at this time. I know lots of uh, people on even more uh, current charges who have been invited to go to a police station, who have been put under caution, who, who have been interrogated and have been put... It doesn't stop the interrogators or the investigators doing their uh, job. But no, they opted for uh, a piece of legislation that should have been kicked out, uh, one, one which totally denies citizens uh, their rights. And that's my objection. It's just not... It's, it's the old guard using the old methods when a better way of getting the same result would have probably assisted their investigation, but certainly wouldn't have sent the type of signal it sent to people who really want a hope in the future. It was okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so. Robinson, given today that he accused um, Sinn Féin and Republicans of using bully boy tactics. 
How do you think your relationship will be with Peter Robinson now? Well, 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 Peter Robinson is, is a partner in government with us and is in a co-equal uh, position with my comrade and our leader, Martin McGuinness. So Peter has, has work to do with us and we have work to do uh, with him and we will continue to do that. And I, I, I said, and I, I wrote those remarks in, in my cell uh, this morning, early this morning, I said that we're totally and absolutely committed to this uh, peace process, that there will be blockages and difficulties and bumps in the road, but there's only one way and that's forward. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, Jerry. Please, please, would you help these junior detention and what does this mean for Sinn Féin, the party and Sinn Féin? Well, Sinn Féin remains totally and absolutely wedded to the ongoing development of a new political dispensation, including a new policing dispensation, and with some work to do. I, 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 when, I, when I was leaving, I, I commended the custody staff because I thought that they were decent in terms of how they were doing their, their job. But I did make a formal complaint uh, about one particular aspect of my interrogation, and I want in due course to reflect on the structure within that holding centre, I think it's 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 not it's not uh, up to the type of standards that one would uh, expect, and the food in it is uneatable. I, I didn't I, I didn't eat for the first number of uh, days because it just wasn't possible to digest it. Uh, I told I told as I have outlined uh, the PSNI that I reject absolutely the allegation that they. We're making against me. Uh, Jerry, uh, um, the nature of the interview you described went back to the 60s, the 70s, into the 72 peace talks that you described. This clearly was a, a wider interview than, than just the Jean McCombo uh, killing. Uh, do you think uh, this was an investigation that was also looking at a possible charge of IRA membership? Yes, I think that was, that was part of. The, the allegation made against me. It actually went back before the 60s. It went back to when I was about 18 months. <laughs> I'm serious. And, and uh, when I lived for a short while in, in Greencastle, and then it meandered through my childhood. Uh, so, uh, and, 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 and clearly what, what they were doing, they were doing what one would call uh, a phased in, interrogation. So, just let me check. So, they did uh, 33 taped interviews. So, uh, that, as I explained earlier, in, in terms of, of the phased nature of it. Uh, if, if they had a charge against me, one presumes that they, they would have made a charge uh, against me. But they offered no evidence against me whatsoever. And the only allegations made against me were based, as I've said earlier, on these, uh, I, I want to be accurate here, on these Boston tapes and the the mishmash of newspaper articles, books, photographs, open source uh, material. So, uh, I mean, they're, they're perfectly entitled to do that, don't, don't get me wrong, that's their, uh, that, that's their job, I'm not ob objecting to that. Uh, I, I just think that uh, in all of this, those who authorised this uh, didn't make the right strategic decision for placing. Who did they get authorised? I don't know. Uh, the, 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 the application, uh, as, as you may know, you, you're held for 12 hours and then a, an inspector has to come in and authorise for another 12 hours. It's actually a wee bit like John Cleese where uh, I, I, I put the case to the inspector that no evidence had been put to me at 12 hours 
which was grounds to let me out. And my solicitor also protested to the custody uh, people. And he took all of the blink of an eyelid to, uh, to turn down my representation. And that went on, there was a superintendent. I thought it was quite, quite, quite interesting. A superintendent, after I think 36 hours, they bring in a superintendent. So this superintendent came in and did the same thing and then again extended my uh, detention. But he told me he was there to, you know, he wasn't involved in the case and he, he was there to adjudicate on this. And then when they went to the court, which they have to do after I think 48 hours, it was the same superintendent who applied to the court to have my detention extended. The same man who presented himself as uh, not involved in the case and indeed adjudicating and so there are, lots of, there are lots of things in this process and in this system which aren't up to, to 2014 standards of policing or the rights of citizens. Okay, I'm going to take two more. No, no, sorry, yourself. Go ahead. Were you worried about the new infantry? Are you worried that it will impact the repercussions that your arrest may have? My only worry, and I don't want to sound, you know, as if... I'm, I'm devoid of an, any concern. You know, I, I obviously have friends, I, I have a wife, I have family. Uh, this is a new experience for some of them, particularly the, the younger members. So obviously I'm concerned about uh, all, all, all of them. But as I said in my, my, my remarks, I'm an activist. This is the life I have. This is part of it. If, if you make a stand, if you want to change things in society, which is as bad it done as it, and this one in, in very bad uh, practice, then you have to be prepared for the possibility that you could end up in the situation that I ended up in. But my, my major concern, and I, I, and I repeat this, is the signal that this could send out. And, and that's why I so strongly, so strongly stressed that this party is totally and absolutely committed to building the peace, no matter what comes. No matter who tries to prevent it, and it isn't our process, it's for everybody. And citizens need to be vigilant and alert to this. There are young people, there are young people in this hotel, there are young people out in those streets, there are young people in the Shankill Road, young people in Bellamy that never saw uh, armoured cars, tanks, guns, British soldiers, never saw anyone killed or injured, never had to visit a prison. There are legions of women who are free from the burden of going to cemeteries from all sides. And yes, there are issues like Mrs. McCumbell's killing and burial and the others that need to be dealt with, and we're, we're up for that. But all of those who have never experienced that don't deserve ever to experience it. Oh. Okay, no, sorry, sorry. No, but the one. I'm going to take one last question here, but first, you're indicating... Are you okay? <laughs> What's your name? Cade? Kiernan. And Miguel got a good Neil? And Miguel got a good Neil? Ta? Tell me, go ahead and talk our father, go tell me. Hans says that a bull loves it. No, we have we have never called for uh, we've never called for an amnesty, but let me tell you this: these these Boston tips are an entirely dubious project. I mean, to be to be faced. Uh, I, I was in Long Cash when uh, you were brought to to a commission, and a police officer stood behind a curtain, and you didn't know who he was, and he was called. Police officer A. Be now, how many years is it now? 40 years? To be told that you're accused by in, 
enter UE A or R or X. That's not, that's not, that's not a judicial system. So don't be, don't be, you know, too mesmerized about the, uh, about the Boston tapes as, as being an evidential basis of any kind against anybody by disgruntled anti-peace process uh, individuals who represent no one whatsoever. And then, Sean, no, no, and Kesh, there, no, go on, yet. Well, ta esogum mora dirt me go well and chaila macambal a cream and trojesh shaw August ta ta. Rod go han me kiart janta egan childish gen of Skoharaha and Ban Ursul, Jean Jean McCampbell, August Rin and IRA Rin Ugly Naharane. So Tame Fear, Fear Brunach, Fui Shin, August Tamisha, Augustiniella, and Kyonosak, Shin Fiona Yanavar Nihil, A Shin Akur Egyart. Fui Naplini. Uh, Tamaj Torch Taka Dinaplini, Tamaj Sasta Alana Rai, Lashan Process Shahana Nilian, Boharala Nilian, Sliella, Akyon and Shehan Akur, Kyon Kane, no Akur Kontusik. Okay, Gurmai, good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, the uh, end of the news conference that's uh, been underway for about